Head north from here. Montana's up there somewhere. Uh, you know, basic military doctrine says never split your forces, Sergeant Major. Well, then, stay with the main force column right into Pelton. There's a standing billet there for you. Come meet the folks. Well, I will be back down south around Christmas. It's been an honor, Sergeant Major. Likewise, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dear mother and father, it is with great excitement that I write to tell you that I am on my way. After a final formation with the men and officers of the entire regiment, I rode out in civilian clothes, no longer the sergeant major, but once again, Bobby Hathaway, U.S. Cavalry, retired. After 25 years wearing the blue, I admit that I left that life behind with not a little sadness. My old comrade Mike Butler is traveling with me. We have campaigned together many times. He seems unsure about his plan for the future. I hope you will not mind my offering him the option of visiting Pelton. The prospect of returning to work with you both in the mercantile makes me wish the rail line to Pelton was finished now instead of in the spring. Then I could be home in a fortnight instead of many weeks of dusty travel. I look forward to seeing my cousin Curtis after all these years. He was but a schoolboy when I left, though I recall plainly his constant good nature. I gather from your letters that he has become indispensable to your business. You can imagine how I look forward to reacquainting myself with my old friend, Stu Kroger. To learn that my best friend when I was a boy had become such a successful businessman, and with Stu's example to guide me, I hope to grow our store into an even larger and more diverse concern. I am anxious to arrive home and begin the next part of my life close to family and old friends, and return to you with a good cash stake and pension. I know that my long absence has been trying for you. Rest assured that it has often been a trial for me as well. Until then, I remain your loving son, Robert C. Hathaway III. Nice beating you again, Elmo. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Bobby Hathaway. <laughs> Last time I saw you, you ordered a beer, right? As rain. Good memory. Sure is quiet in here. Always is on a Sunday. Your daddy told me you were coming home. What owe you there, Ray? Don't even try to pay for drink at my place, son. <laughs> How about my old buddy? He hadn't changed a bit, has he, Ray? Yeah, but you sure have. Look at that suit of clothes. And everywhere I look in town, it's Stu Croker this, Stu Croker that. <laughs> Welcome home. Many thanks. So, uh, you own the Oasis now, huh? Among other things. Tell you what, I ride out toward your mom and daddy's with you. Charlie. Old times. I'll drink to that. Hell, Bobby, live a little for once. Still got to talk you in everything. Cold times. New opportunity. I talked you going to the army, didn't I? Look how that worked out. What's next for you? Uh, go to work, make some money. Say, we ought to go out on the town tonight. Proud to, as soon as I see my folks. in the house, have some supper. Now you go on and enjoy your family. It's your homecoming. Sure is good to see you again, Stu. I want you to come over tonight. I have a surprise for you. I'll see you tonight.
we weren't expecting you till week's end. So, where's the friend you wrote us about? Oh, Mikey headed north. Somebody about hunting buffalo. Bobby! <laughs> Looky here. Oh, it's about time. Ah, young cousin Curtis all grown up, huh? You're telling yet? No. Welcome home, son. Papa. <laughs> oh, it's great to see you. You do, too. Oh, Norm, it's okay. It's all right. He's a guest. Well, quit golfing, country, and come on in and have a drink. Well, look at this place. Didn't the Williams just own this? That's right. I bought it for my wife right after we got hitched. You married? Four years. Come on in. Sugar. That fellow's here I wanted you to meet. <laughs> I wish I could have gotten a picture. Edgar, come in here. Constance, it's good to see you. Hello, Bobby. I don't want to spoil the surprise for either of you. Come on, Connie, give Bobby a hug. We're all old friends here. Well, get, come on, get closer together. Please, Stu, I wasn't expecting this. I look a fraud. Nonsense. You're glowing. Come on, Bobby, put your arm around her or something. It's only been 15 years since you saw each other. Take it, Edgar. Good. <laughs> Ain't this something? My best buddy and his old girl, my wife. All of us together again. Well, uh, we'll let you get back to your evening. You're raring to go, aren't you? You'll excuse us, won't you, Sugar? We got a lot of catching up to do. Congratulations. I'm a little more quiet. What, you too good for my saloon? Oh, no, no, come on, Sue. That's not what I meant at all. Well, well, Dakota, ain't you looking fit? What you got here, girls, is a genuine war hero, just back from fighting the savages. You show them a good time. I'll be back directly, Bobby. Have fun. Excuse me. Nancy, boy. I'll have an apology. You will? I will. Are you looking up the wrong tree? Expecting that. You going to take up that scattered gun if that's what suits you? Young. He'll learn. If he lives long enough. Being a friend of Stu's and all, we'll let this one slide. Meet my son, Bobby. How do you do? I expect you to play that thing now. Woo! I range here. <laughs> Good Lord, look at you! Oh. Good to see you, Miss Irene. 
And you're done with the army, I'm to understand. Yes, ma'am. I'm retired. Draw a pension and everything. Good. Serena, honey girl, come over here. I want you to meet somebody. Serena Sanchez, this is Bobby Hadaway, Dora and Robert's boy. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Sanchez. It's nice to meet you. Woo! It's official! This is a party! I just took a turn around the place. I need to clear some brush first thing in the morning. You want to help me out? Yes, yeah, sir. Listen, Pa, I really appreciate you never asking me about Spencer's Drift. Oh, no need to ask. I, I learned everything I needed to know about war at San Jacinto back in 36. About that medal they pinned on me. Yeah, well, medals are fine, but in my opinion, the man who wears them it doesn't do much more than just remind him of the comrades he left behind and the men he killed in action. Am I right? Yes, sir. We're so proud of you, son. But not because you came back a hero. We're proud of you because of the man you turned out to be when we raised you as a boy. Thank you, Paul. There, Cleet. They say if you count the seconds until you hear the thunder, that's how many miles away the lightning strikes. That was five seconds. Seemed longer, didn't it? Hand her over. Come on, Stu. I know what you've done to some others. I just came for you before you came for me. You sell me your freight line and your river bottom land, and I'll let you live. I got a pen and paper right here. Deal. Lloyd. Late start there, aren't you, Curtis? I've been up since before daylight, unlike some folks. What do you want for breakfast, Bobby? No, nothing for me, Mama. Thanks. You got a plan today, son? Thought I'd take a little look around town. Go see the store. Lots of changes. Yeah, well, you sure as hell have it. Bobby! Ow. <laughs> you know how your mama feels about strong language in the house. I apologize, Mama. Well, I'm gonna take a little ride. I'll help you gather your horse. Go! Oh. Curtis, are you getting fat? Just good living, cousin. Good living. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you never left. Sure is. And when are you going to tell him, Robert? 
I don't know, sweetheart. I don't know. Well, looky here. You always could sit a horse, Constance. Nobody sasses me for not riding side saddle anymore. Who are they for? Oh, one's for my mother and the other one's, uh, for a friend. You hadn't changed a bit, Bobby Hadaway. Things sure have changed for you, Connie. Truly. I always thought you'd marry well and wind up in San Francisco. Well, me too. I like to come down here a lot. <laughs> I sure had fun here when we were kids. Long time ago. Let me help you with that. I ought to pick some of these for the dining room. Well, I best be going. You always were so good to me, Bobby. You always deserved it, Connie. Son returns, huh? Gus Cagle? You're the sheriff? Hey, no account for people's choices now. <laughs> well, how's old Pelton look to you? Yeah. Nice and quiet. Just like I remember. Yeah. Same as always, huh? Yeah, Sheriff. Mostly. Well, you're gonna have to excuse me. I'm doing court this morning. Nice to see you again, Bobby. Same here, Gus. Where you headed? Huh? Corinth. Why? Cornmeal, beans, evaporated milk for the store. Ha! Step up now! Morning. We're open for business. Well, there's hardly anything on the shelves. Yeah, we're uh, we're having a little bit of a supply problem. Supply problem. Trouble getting everything we need to stock those shelves, especially after Kate Utley sold out. Well, what do you mean? Stu Croker made him one offer after another, and he finally made one that Kate took. Sold his land and the freight line. Went back to Tennessee. I heard. Is that why Curtis is going for stock? All right. Here's the truth. Two years ago, I made a decision. I decided I wanted to improve the quality of the store. Make it bigger, nicer. But before I could go to the bank to borrow the money, Stu shows up. He offers me a loan at an interest rate I thought was pretty good. And? I had to put the homestead up as collateral against the note. What? You know, business has been really bad this year. Low. Every bit of money that I make, I gotta pay off the interest. And to top it off, four loads of dry goods were stolen in the last five months. Stolen? By high women? Have you tried armed guards? What, what, what did the sheriff do? Gus? Yeah, I told him about it. He just sauntered off down to the chop house and got a cup of coffee. But that's not the worst of it. Go on. The note is due next week, and I just don't know how I'm going to pay it. Why didn't you tell me any of this? I didn't, I didn't want to burden you. 
I don't want you to inherit my problems. Oh, we're family. Your problems are my problems. No, they are not. No, sir. That's it. I'm making that payment today out of my savings. The hell you are! The hell I'm not! I've lived like a monk for years, so I'd have some money for a rainy day, and this sure as hell looks like it to me. Sir, listen to me. No, sir. I'm the one giving the advice this time. Thought you might like a drink. You feel good. Answer. Go on. I'm not decent. I like to show you all. Go on. I'm here to see Stu. Yeah, he's uh, in his office. There he is. Am I giving to understand you had a little tussle with the help evening before last? Uh, it's nothing to write home about. I'd hoped we could talk a little business. Now, honey, honey, you stay right there. Ain't nothing you can't say in front of my wife. So, have you elected to cast your fortunes with me? Well, I'm grateful for the offer, Stu. But the truth is, I'm taking over at Hathaway Mercantile. You don't say. Here's just month's loan payment. Got some ideas that ought to get us back on track. And, uh, listen, I appreciate you helping out Paul with the loan. Anything for a friend. I just wanted you to hear the news. I'll show myself out. Constance. Good day, Bobby. You take care of yourself. I think this would look really pretty, and you need a new party dress, you know? This would look very pretty at the cuff. You don't think it's too much? A pretty girl like you? Nothing's too much. Let's cut this. Come on. <laughs> what am I afraid of, huh, Dobbin? Good afternoon, Mr. Hathaway. Can I do something for you? <clears throat> I was wondering if you'd like to go on a picnic. Good God. What? I'll be back directly, honey girl. <laughs> a picnic? Today, down by the river is a pretty spot I used to know. That sounds nice. Yes. Yes, it does. Where the hell did he get the money? This is drawn on a federal depository from his savings. Won't last long what they pay soldiers. Peligro, senor. I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. I habla inglés. Senor, I don't speak English. What the hell? 
Heading back from Corn, somebody ambushed him, stole his wagon, and uh, roughed him up pretty good. How's he doing? I haven't talked to the doctor yet. Your mama's in there now. Well, how bad is it? Well, they broke three of his ribs, gave him a concussion. Never should let him go alone. Oh, don't blame yourself, Robert. You blame the bastards who did this to him. Let's go inside and see Curtis. Consider another town to do your homesteading in, huh? Come on, let's tie him to the tree. does not want to press charges. Says he cannot identify his attackers. So what do you want me to do? I want you to arrest those two fellas, Sheriff. OK, Bobby. Did you say you witnessed those two fellas uh, assaulting that man, huh? Huh? So what if Sue just happens to lay claim to that property? I'll tell you what, Bobby. That land is going back on the homestead list at the beginning of next month. And it is perfectly legal for a Stu Croker or anybody else in this entire territory to stake the claim. I swear, Gus, I never thought justice had so much to do with the law. I reckon I was wrong. What are the Mexican families in town trade? Most go to Senor Gomez's store in Corinth. Really? You think we can get their business? Your father would risk the business of all the white families for 25 brown ones. He married a Mexican woman. What do you think? I'll take half a dozen. Follow me. Irene, the ladies would love to see some cloth. Oh, that was a fine 
Iron Man. Yes, it was. Thank you. It's about land and water. The Hathaway estate is less than a mile from the side of the railway station. There's three wells on the property. I want that land, and by God, I will have it. Excuse me, can I have everybody's attention, please? We have increased our business 23%. Oh. Yes. Thank you. Lloyd. What's brewing? Time to get serious about the Hathaways. I'll have that ready for you tomorrow. Thank you. Muchas gracias, señora. The Hathaways aren't here. Didn't say I was looking for any of them. We can order calling cards or personalized stationery for you. I hear you've been a big help, bringing in some fresh business in here. Bobby and I'm real glad they put you to work. I remember you almost worked for me when you first arrived in our fair city. I thought it best not to. It's not for everyone, is it? I just have to wonder what a beauty like you is doing working for a bunch about to go under. Stu Croker? Yes? You owe me $15 for that watch. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Fill that mug right up for me. You sure you want to have a drink here, Curtis? Of course I'm sure. This barn town, isn't it? Only bar in town. My beer, Ray. Watch the bar. Well, now here's a parched looking fellow. Thirsty work. What with all them pinafores and sugar tits and whatnot down at the store? Well, we all have to be good at something. I wonder, you think Stu will keep you on at the mercantile even after he's taken over? I don't believe we'll ever know, seeing as how he'll never take over. You know, I bet. He'll find a place for you. We can always use someone to clean out the spittoons and do the laundry now that the Chinaman's out of business. That really ought to get on home. I'm gonna finish my beer and go. Well, that'll be 10 cents. Yeah, I paid Ray. I said 10 cents, shopkeeper. Why don't you come and get it, you damn thief? Ah! 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 Hold up, hold up. Ah! I guess you didn't have enough last time, did you? This here is Mr. Croker's town. He don't need trash like you around here. I've had enough of Stu Croker! I'm gonna kill all of you! That's him. One medal honor, it's been for the trip. Having that medal makes me feel like a liar. I got it for a battle where what I did was ride. A boy named Howlin did most of the fighting. Did he get a medal? Posthumously. He was a dead private. They gave the big medal to the live sergeant. Men tried to kill you that day. For six days running. You tried to save your men? More than anything. Then you don't have anything to be ashamed of. 
Didn't feel that way. Bobby! I'm taking an awful chance slipping out to tell you this. Your cousin got the worst end of a dust-up in the bar with Lloyd and Vic. Look out! Someone's gonna be. Stay where you are! Judgment Day's here, Croker! <laughs> Croker! It's all right, boys. He's harmless. Harmless? I'll show you harmless. Curtis, stop it! Stop it right now! Out of my way! You're gonna go home. You're not any help here. You hear me? Go on. I am not leaving. Yes, you are. Now get. Let me take care of this. Judgment Day is still coming! <laughs> Stu, when did owning this town get so damned important? It always was. He was just too stupid as boys to see it. You can still have a piece of the pie. Yeah, what piece is that? The one I say you can have. You're not interested? Get the hell off my property. Be trespassing. No, we're gonna finish this right now. Like I said, you're trespassing. All right, let's just put those weapons down, fellas. Put them down. Sure glad to see you, Sheriff. This man is trespassing. I want him arrested. I'll take that sidearm, Bobby. Get inside. Now! OK, come on, get on your horse. Tell you what, Bobby, you are lucky that gal of yours found me. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been anything left of you, even for your daddy to claim. Why is it my cousin gets beaten and I'm the one in jail? Your cousin wasn't the one accused of trespassing. How come you jump every time Stu Croker barks? Bobby, Bobby, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt for that comment. Stu Croker provides heaps of opportunity. Yeah? He provides something for you, Sheriff? Bobby. No, come here. You know what? You're gonna watch your mouth. Don't you make me forget I'm wearing this bag. Maybe you ought to remember you're wearing it, Gus. I saved your life, Bobby Hathaway. How'd you like watching your old flame get hauled off like a common damn criminal? Conversation's too much to ask for the likes of you. Bobby never talked to me like that. <coughs> Stop drinking that liquid courage, sweetheart. It makes you stupid. <coughs> it's a good thing you still get me going. Don't make me warn you again. Or what, Stu? With oh, that sass of yours, I'll get the business end of me. Gus had Bobby's gun belt over his saddle horn. Who in the world is this? <laughs> you sit tight. Look, 
looking for the Hathaways. You found it. State your business. Sergeant Major Michael J. Butler. I served with Bobby. Step down. Come on in. You're free to go. Don't know how this fella got here so fast. Well, there he is, Sergeant Major. You're doing the right thing, Sheriff. Sergeant Major Hathaway is a decorated veteran and an upstanding citizen. The Colonel sends his thanks. Try to stay out of trouble, Bobby. Let's go, Trooper. The Colonel sends his thanks? <laughs> you ought to be ashamed taking advantage of Gus's respect for the uniform. It's called ruse in military parlance, Trooper. What are you doing around here? Christmas is a ways off. Well, all that excitement was getting to me. I had a hankering for some easy living. Well, you better turn around right now. Yeah, you gotta be more grateful. I show up here just as your folks find out you're in jail. I'm on a relief effort. Many thanks. It's all part of the service. It's too bad you're not a lawyer. I expect I'm gonna need one pretty soon. Yeah, it seems like my actual talents might come in handier around here. You might be right, Trooper. Thanks, Charlie. Bartender will be back in a minute. Do I look like a man who's here to drink? I'm trying to eat. What do you want? Tell your master. Meet Bobby at their old hunting camp this afternoon. It'll be cozy. Just the four of us. You know, my friend made me promise not to kill you. Now that I'm here, I might renege. Enjoy your meal. That about 300 yards. You know, I could have the second one away before they hear the first. I appreciate the offer, but we'll let him live today. I was hoping you'd remember this place. How could I forget? Spent the best years of my life right here. Let's get to it. You remember how we mapped out every trail and water hole between here and Old Mexico? Yeah, I still got the map sheet. Go on. Well, I don't expect you asked me out here to admire the scenery. I didn't. I was hoping we could sort this mess out. You're a real malo hombre, huh? Nah, I wouldn't say that. You know what I think of soldiers? I got a feeling you're gonna tell me. They run around in silly outfits. Afraid when there's a bunch of them. Don't amount to nothing on their own. 
You know, I can tell you're a man of vast martial experience. Who did you serve with? I want to keep it simple. We'll pay you what we owe you. I brought you a double payment today. Goes against my better judgment, but I'll make it easy for you. Give up the home place, keep the store. We'll call it even. We won't do that. Then I'll have to get rid of you. What's that supposed to mean? It means I'll have your folks land and the store. You do that to my mother and father, good as they were to you? This ain't got nothing to do with their pity for me as a boy. So this is about me? That's right. The war hero. Just between you and me, old buddy, I bet you ain't such a big hero after all. I bet you got a free ride on that one just like you did on everything else. Goodbye, Stu. It's been a long time coming, old buddy. All my life, really. I sure miss the boy I knew. You know, I haven't killed me a shanty Irish Mick in a long time. Stop. Now, you know how much you scare me when you talk like that. You ought to be moving on. No, I got me a personal interest now. Rejected a payment. I guess that makes us even. I was awful rash of me. I'm here to make amends. I'll buy you out on the spot. My draft book right here. But you know my answer to that. Don't you turn your back on me? Turn out all go to round. You know the truth about you, Stu? The only time you were worth anything is when you were growing up with Bobby. But I'm an idiot. Because I thought you might still be that boy. I trusted you. That was my big mistake. Now you take your hired hands when you get the hell out of here. Tried to get to my horse. What happened? Who did this to you? To Stu. Never should have turned my back on him. All right, you be quiet now. <laughs> you save your strength, all right? You never forget how proud I am of you, son. You take care of your mom. No, sir. No. You hang on, Pa. Okay? You hear me? We 
all feel very sorry about your uncle. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Last of them are gone. I'm sure a lot of folks will miss Uncle Robert. You see who's out front? What do you want, Constance? I am just so sorry, Bobby. Please tell your mother for me. Well, I better go before I'm missed. I always liked your father. He always liked you too, Connie. service? Stu, I don't want to argue with you. It doesn't make any sense to me, Connie. With the little I ask of you, why can't you show a little loyalty right now? Because unlike us, the Hathaways are good people who deserve my respect. <laughs> it's what I get for asking an honest question, I guess. Get inside! Good having you home, son. It's good to be home, Mom. <laughs> You got something else to talk about? You know, the lid's about to blow off this town. I suppose you're not gonna do anything about Stu. There is nothing for me to do, at least not right now. I told you what my dad said just before he died. Bobby, and they place him somewhere else at the time. And of course you believe them. Told me about this. 
draw me not without reason, sheathe me now without honor. Robert was saving those things for you. I know what you're thinking, Neil, and I want you to forget about it. What am I thinking about? Bobby, listen to me. I will throw a party when that son of a bitch is roasting in hell. But I don't want you to help him get there. I need you alive. sorry to hear about Robert Hathaway. He was like a father to me. Now, why don't you save that for folks who don't know any better? Heard it was robbery. Plain and simple. I was over at the saloon. Yeah, that Dakota gal, she backs you up. Why the sudden interest, Gus? Fact is, Bobby Hathaway said his daddy named you just before he died. All the Hathaways are out to get me. Well, you know, I'd like to talk to Constance. She ain't home. Whereabouts is she? You stay the hell away from her. Yeah, well, I'll come back when it's a little more convenient. You get on out of here. You don't come back without asking first. I got you elected, I could get you unelected. Chance, Mike. You sure you want to be a part of this? I told you, Bobby. I'm in. Well, Mike, you're looking at it. Yeah. Not exactly an armory, is it? Yeah, but it's all we got. Mm. Hell, let's just ride out the stews and have at it. Now, nah, be waiting for us. We need to draw him out, make him show his hand. I'll be right back. Where do you hit the enemy, Bobby? At his weakest point at the time of your choosing. Will this help? <laughs> and a good plan executed violently today is better than a perfect plan carried out next week. Time's passed. Damn yeah, right. Let's get it done. Safe's cleaned out. Horses are waiting down the street. All right, Curtis, get these boys outside. Get up, let's go. Come on, boys.
you tell Stu Croker this war has started? Father could always sleep like that. Asleep, but not asleep. What skill you acquire in battle. Get cleaned up, have some breakfast, then you can sleep all you want. I don't have time to sleep today. You rest. I'll keep a weather eye out. Go. people gawking at. Go on, get about your business. Let's go! Place is a wreck. And the safe is empty. I want to know where those bastards are. One at a time, or all at once, they're dead men. Yes, sir. About the livery next. It's a high value target. Too easy to defend. What about the land office? It's just a building. All the important stuff's at the county clerk's office. Well, wherever we go, he'll have the guns. Well, that's right. Which is why we'll bring him to us. Curtis, I need you to do a dangerous job for me. I'm ready. Take Mama to stay with Irene. Let people know that Mike left town. It's just me and you running the mercantile. Oh, I like it already. Gus Cagle is coming up the road. I don't know if you heard yet, but uh, somebody demolished Croker's saloon last night. Really? You want deputies to spend the night with you out here? Or? We have nothing to fear. All right, well, we'll be at the store if you need us, me and Curtis. Somebody put a big old donation on church steps last night. Well, I reckon Pastor Bo will put that money to good use. Yeah, I expect so. Well, you take care, Bobby. You wrote me not without reason. Sheath me not without honor. I've been told that Irishman rode out first thing this morning. It's just your friend Bobby and his dimwit cousin running that store like nothing ever happened. You sure you want to do this, boss? You listen to me, both of you. Can you hear me good? I aim to see Bobby halfway in the grave by sundown. We're paying my old buddy a visit. Right in the middle of town? It's time folks knew who was in charge around here. Get my horse and meet me out front.
talking about the saloon. Have you seen Stu? I want you to go to Irene's and stay there until this is over. I'm gonna do some things that change the way you look at me. I expect you won't believe I'm the sort of man you'd like to keep company with anymore. You come for me when you're done. Middle of the day. Won't you beat all? Hmm. I want a nap. I'll be back in a few hours. You get dressed up nice. Going into town for supper. Try and sober up. That's right. You got your shooting irons clean today, boys. You're gonna need them. Let's go! Yeah! Sorry, cousin of yours.
Someday. But not today. Hang on, son. You just hang on. I'm proud to say that you proved me wrong, Gus. I figured you'd head here. I cut across Starter Ridge to beat you. I ain't got time for this, Bobby. I gotta get stepping to Mexico. Your traveling days are done, I'm afraid. Let's finish up. I'm hot to see Constance. If it wasn't for her, you'd have gotten the drop on us. How do you mean? Well, she rode out here and let us know you were coming. She said my mother's waiting for me right now. I got the men unloading the shipment out back. Do you need me up here? No, no, we're fine. Go ahead and take care of it. Dunya, I'm supposed to meet Bobby. Am I the only person involved with this business who can deal with the public? I could stay. No, Wapa, I'm only kidding. Go on. Scott. Oh, Ruby Jane, good morning. Good morning. Girl. I'm so glad to tell you that the cloth you ordered has arrived. Oh, good. And it's beautiful. It sure is. Isn't that pretty? Mm. <gasps> Hello there, honey girl. Oh, I am late to show Millie Carson these fabric samples. And Velma Davis is coming by to pick up her frock this afternoon. And hey, I just saw that handsome husband of yours down to the sheriff's office. <laughs> Bye now. All right, never want to get a meal with them. Try. Good please. afternoon, <laughs> gentlemen. Afternoon, Mrs. Hathaway. <laughs> Serena. <laughs> now, if you two will excuse us, I have a date with my bride. Bobby, you can do as you please. I'm retired. <laughs> yeah, go on your little date, Sheriff. Your good looking deputy is on the job. No, oh, I left the mercantile trade because you can't get good help. And look what I'm stuck with in my new line of work. Don't tarry. Okay, come on, Mike. We got a game of checkers waiting on us. Sheriff, ma'am. <laughs> you want to take a ride out to the house after the picnic? I think I should be finished with that roof by Monday. Well, that's fine. The furniture's not due to arrive for another 10 days anyway. As long as I've waited to start a family, you'd think that a couple of days wouldn't matter. But it really does. Used to be, Ray. Used to be. Not anymore. 